An actual power supply. New electronic smell. Locking power supply. Okay, there you have it, the A10 Mini Pro. I wasn't the first to get one, but at least I got one early enough to test it out and see how it fits into my regular workflow. <clears throat> I've been working with an ATEM t television studio, the original television studio, for quite a while. I've also worked with the 4K uh, as well as some of the um, their large ones, the ME ones. But I've been using the production studio during this quarantine for me to work out of my home. Um, I do a lot of uh, streaming and uh, conference calls, meetings, different uh, events, interviews, right from the safety of my own home using the television studio and the um, Surface, their Blackmagic Design's first control surface. And one of the things that's missing from the television production studio is the ability to do DVEs. And DVEs are picture-in-picture -picture, um, and some of the other features that are available here on the A10 Mini Pro. Now, this is one of the times I was real fortunate not to buy the A10 Mini. I was just about to buy it when uh, the COVID-19 struck and all of them were sold out. And I was so fortunate I waited because they released the Mini Pro and got it out much quicker than I anticipated. And so this gives me options for streaming, for switching, that the television production studio doesn't give me, as well as the ATEM, original ATEM Mini doesn't give me. So we're going to run through this. We're gonna set it up, test it out. I have multiple cameras set up. I'm gonna do an over the top view. And we're gonna test this out today and see how it's going to work for me moving forward. This took a lot longer to get set up than I originally anticipated. Um, I wish I could have recorded the whole setup time, but I'm using the cameras facing this way. And I'll take a picture of what this looks like. I, I, I don't try to envy people a lot, but I envy those guys who have a space that they can call their own studio. Right now I'm using my living room. Uh, and that I'm sharing with four other people as, as we try to get through this uh, quarantine situation. But I really just took the time to get set up. I have an over the head view uh, with some, uh, a new pole that I purchased specifically for these type of shots. Um, I do have my GH5. Don't mind all the cables in the way. Like I said, I don't, I don't have the space for cable management right now. I have my GH5 right there, and I have the EOS R right here. And uh, yes, I have cables everywhere. I had to dismantle some of my streaming work to get all this stuff set up. So right now, um, you can't see it. I'm just a bit out of frame. Right here is my laptop. And I haven't set up the A10 Mini Pro yet. All right, so I'm recording to the video assist. I have a house full of Blackmagic products today. I'll record the video assist so you can see my multi-view mode. I have the um, A10 Mini Pro set up for multi-view on the only HDMI out. And I am recording to, oh, let's see if I can get this in the shot. I am recording to my Samsung T5 um, SSD using USB-C in the back of the uh, Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini Pro. Oh boy, I suppose I can just go out from the laptop into the ATEM Mini. You guys and your requests, I'm telling you. I'm trying to make this video as short as possible and you're just killing me. But the truth is, I have the tools right here. I might as well use it. So, are you happy now? You are able to see the laptop. Okay. I mean, that's why we bought these Mini Pros, right? So we can do all this stuff. So right now, you can see my television studio on the network and my Mini Pro. So we're going to go ahead and connect. And ta-da, I can go straight switching. Uh, let's see, what am I recording to? 
So I have my mini view here, my uh, multi viewer here, and I have, I'm recording also to the SSD. Uh, too bad I don't have time code. I'll just have to sync all this up by uh, audio. I also have my wireless lav going right into Mini Pro. Now, one of the things I really love is that they set your audio controls right on top. You don't have to go into any menu to take care of that. So I can turn on or turn off my mini inputs. They use 3.5 millimeter, 1.8, uh, 1.8, 1 8 inch connector. Thank God. Um, and the... You can turn them on and off. You have the two inputs. You have the complete access to turn them on and off. Now, let's be honest. Uh, for some people with large hands, these buttons are small, but that's why you have the software. You can do a lot with the software itself. So I have my, let's do this. Let's go to our laptop input. And so you can see me switching easily. And now I do have a stream deck, and I would love to be able to set that up. But since this video is not going to be 30 minutes long, let's just focus. So I got my views, my two cameras, one, two, my switcher view, overhead view, and then my laptop view. And really, the, what took, like I said, what took the setup so long is I don't have a dedicated space. But you see how easy it was to put the laptop into the switcher. I took out my HDMI cable, plugged it in, and because of the wonderful scalers that they put in this low-cost device, you are able to just plug and play. Both cameras are set to 4K 30p. Um, I gotta be honest, I don't know what my overhead shot is set to. I'll have to take a look at that. It should be 1080p 60, uh, 5997. And then my laptop is 1080, 60. So I have three different resolutions coming into the Mini Pro, and yet it's able to accept it without problems. Now, my, the other ATEMs don't have scalers in them, and that has caused tremendous problems. I've had to purchase decimators and mini converters to get things to work properly. Um, for that reason, I had gone to the Lumentech. I did a review of that quite a while ago, the Lumentech VS4, which is a wonderful switcher. But because it's a little bit bulkier and it's more expensive, this purchase, this device becomes a good purchase for smaller venues. Now, some of the huge upgrades, I'm not even going to get into the streaming today. I'm going to do the streaming on another day. One of the major benefits of the Mini Pro as opposed to the Mini is the addition of the multi-view, which you'll be able to see. I'll just switch over to the multi-view look. And that is a wonderful feature. Do I wish I had more inputs? Yeah, sure. Do I wish I had more outputs? Definitely. With just the one HDMI out, um, you can either do program or multi-view. You can't do both. And splitters aren't going to help you because, like I said, you can only do one. You can't do both. But having the ability to go back and forth between multi-view and program, as you can see, is just a simple touch of a button. So I'm learning as I go. Not that I don't like to read the manual, not that I'm um, not interested in those things, but trying to see how easy this is to set up is crucial. As you can see, our video out is 1080p60, and as I mentioned, only one device here is set to 1080p60, and yet we could see it just fine. My audio, I can either pull in audio from, oh, I could split into separate uh, mono channels. So this I did not know. So I can record multiple things into mono channels. I'm going to have to do that. When I do the streaming test, I'm going to also enable that so I can see what the file looks like in editing. All right, here you have your audio follows video setting, which is important. Um, right now, as I said, I'm just coming in through my lavalier uh, wirelessly to um, to 
mic one. So you can see the setting. It's, you might be able to see that it's red here. It's turned on while you, uh, mic two is turned off. So we're both set to microphone and not lined. Um, my, the difference is the amount of boost in decibels for the microphone. Microphones come in at a lower level than line, so you get a hotter signal with a line uh, selection. If I were to switch to line, you'd immediately, you'd immediately hear... Uh, actually, when I switched to line, you heard nothing. I, I was watching the audio meter and nothing came through, so I'm guessing no audio came through. So you'll see, if you are on line with a microphone plugged in, you may not hear anything. If you're on microphone with a line plugged in, there's a good chance you can just completely distort and overpower the signal. <clears throat> you, on this page, you can adjust your multi-view setting, how it's gonna show up in your multi-viewer. And stream status and record status is awesome. Right now, you can see that I'm recording to the USB-C drive, so the recording status is showing recording. That's really great for being able to see exactly what's happening. You can, just at a glance, you can make sure you're streaming and you're recording. Having the audio status in here is also crucial uh, because then you can see your audio levels. I, I love that uh, ability, to have that ability. Here you can change your labels. I have camera one, camera two, camera three. I'll turn this to overhead. And camera four is actually laptop. Now, because on this side you only see the shortcut keys, I would have to change this to shortcut. Overhead and laptop. Oh, let's do all capitals. And immediately you see it show up here. And once again, I closed out the settings. Now, HyperDeck. The truth is, I do have a HyperDeck on the network, um, but it's not connected to this configuration. It is uh, an SDI in, and so it wouldn't directly work with this. However, we could um, set it up with a network where we can control it from here. All right? So that is special. Okay, so I need to change out the battery in my EOS R because it just went out. And while I don't really need it for this example, I still have two cameras. I still have the overhead, my GH5, and then the laptop view. I shouldn't have burnt my battery out. So uh, let's just leave it off for now. I don't need it. So you got your upstream key, your downstream key, and you can load in graphics. If you go into media, you could actually load in graphics. Uh, let me see if I can find, let me pull in a graphic. Wow, this is a terrible old graphic. I made many, many years ago. So we go back to the switcher select the transition then i'll put it on the air wow that was terrible it's way way back in the day and then take it off now we can also do the transitions to auto come in but that's using an upstream keyer because i would rather use an up a downstream keyer than an upstream keyer so when we do picture in picture which is the dve we're going to choose camera oops we're going to choose camera two as our dve and i'm all the way up in the corner you do have these four options let me do this again you do have these four options very very small of which corner you could put it in now Going back to this view, you'll see in this section right here, you could raise it. Let's, let's increase the size here. Let's make it one. And try it again. Okay, one is a little large. <laughs> so let's do 0 0.5. 0 0.5 might be better. Now, 
you can adjust the position. So this gives you options. Oops, too far. Oops, wrong direction. But it, you are not able to do, one of the things I'd love to be able to do is a double box. And sadly, you're not able to do double boxing here. You could put a border on it. In fact, I think I have a border on it now. I'd like a shadow. So I have my shadow on it. Interesting. You could actually keyframe. I am going to have to play with this. Keyframing your boxes. So you're able to do some transitions here. I see. I said A. Okay, I think I understand now. So I set my A, and I can bring in my A. I click, there you go. So I set A, let me move it to the other side. And set B. Oh, unfortunately I'm covering it, okay. So now I've said B. So I can click on A and say run to A. <laughs> okay. And then I could move them around by clicking on which one to run to, A or B. And then I can get them off the screen. That's really interesting. Sadly though, I still want to be able to do my double box. I want the ability to, especially in these days of um, Zoom conferences or other conferences, and being able to have two people speaking and have something in the background. I think those are really crucial um, elements that I wish were part of this setup. Um, but I'm really impressed with that ability. Set A, well, I can't do it now. You have to turn it on, set A, set B, now I'm picture in picture with myself, it's really corny, then I can make my DVE be full, or I can bring it out completely. It may seem gimmicky, but there are places that you can use it. Okay, that's enough with the palettes. I still need to work on downstream key, there's so much to learn. Uh, here you can set your fade to black timing. Oh, well, you can't see what I'm doing. Down here at the very bottom, you can do fade to black and audio follow video. I like that option. Let me try it now. And yep, and my audio faded right out. I think that's important. That way you don't have any open mic situations like I had yesterday. That's uh, a story for another day. On this screen, you would set up your live stream, your record stream, so you can record to a computer. Yeah, excuse me, your capture video where you record to a computer. And then um, you're able to capture a still. Question is, I guess you're capturing a still of the program. And I'll have to find out where that's saved. I also was able to set up, this is another thing that I like, so I can set up audio levels in two places. I like having it in my program window as well, just because it's what I'm used to with the other ATEMs that I've worked with. This is important to know. When you capture a still, it will put it in the media folder, um, media folders. Um, I think that is really interesting. So, at this point, I could pull this over into my media pool and then play my still. 
And that's what you get. And then I'll go back to the camera setting. Okay. That is cool. So capture stills will put them right here. Let's see what this section is. Oh. So you can also capture the stills while you're in the media section. Here's the audio section. Now, here's the other addition that's been added to the Mini and the Mini Pro that the ATEM, the television studio, doesn't have. I can put equalizer and dynamics in here. Wow, that is quite an improvement. This is like having a door right in your system. Uh, I think that's really, really an improvement, especially with some of the work that we're doing where you have cam audio coming in from the cameras and now you can adjust it. Maybe someone's one camera's audio is so much better than the other ones. Now you have that adjustment, fine adjustment right at your fingertips. That's amazing. Not to be overlooked. Let's see, cameras. I don't have my Blackmagic cameras anymore. And for that, I am really unhappy. Um, just because I could use it and control it from here. Uh, di directly from this control surface, directly from the ATEM, um, that would be significant. What I'd really like to do is put in a lower third. Do I wish I had more uh, media player slots? Yes, of course, but I am very happy with what I've been given so far. And being able to save the current state so you can save, so you can save your uh, settings is once again, these are some wonderful things. AB Direct, under File Preferences, it's your first option actually, it just allows you within the software to say, it doesn't matter what you press, um, red will always be what's live and green will always be in preview. So even if you hit take and it switches, now green is up here, so you change the preview up here. Um, I've never worked with that type of setup, so we're doing program preview, which means this is always your program bar, and this is always your preview bar. Let's take a look at all the settings. This is the microphone section for mic one and mic two, turning them on and off, and then adjusting their volumes, which is a lot cooler than you think. Then this is audio file video settings for each of the, your inputs where you can turn it on so that when you switch to these inputs, the audio will go directly, will be pulled directly from these inputs. So under your cut and auto section, you can change on duration, you can change the time that it takes for each transition. Wow, two seconds is slow or half a second is fast. You can change the effect as we went over before Oh, I'm still on cut, excuse me. You can change the effect. And we promise that real switchers don't use any of those effects. Especially the dip to color. Oh, come on. Anyway, let's go back to mix. Go back to cut. Go back to mix and go back to cut. Under the video out, you determine what goes to your video out. Multi-viewer, program, or the inputs one, two, three, four. Of course, you have up here your record buttons, which is to record and stop, your stream buttons to start streaming, to turn it off, and your keyer. All right, so this will be easier. Let me go ahead and give myself a lower third. Let's see. Nope, there's a problem. It's not accepting. Ah, I know why. I forgot. Let me do it this way. Key one. But if I do this, there we go, downstream key. So instead of using the key, ah, uh, so on, oh, let me take that off. You cannot use, apparently, and I'll find out some more, you cannot use downstream key using just the Mini Pro itself. If I find a way to change the key from upstream key to downstream key on the, on the surface itself, I'm going to really enjoy that. 
because I would want the downstream key to be accessible as opposed to the upstream key, as opposed to, I don't do as much chroma. So maybe if I were doing more chroma, I would make that distinction. So there is so much more that I want to do and I'm going to be digging through the manual and I'm going to find out exactly how to do exactly what I want to do, such as maybe changing this key and making sure I can do preview and program on my multi-viewer. So look, this is Robert with Space Age. Uh, thanks for walking through this with me. Hopefully as I get this edited down, it'll be more concise. <laughs> Maybe I'll upload the full version as well as the edited version and so you can compare. But there's a lot to still learn about the A10 Mini Pro. And, um, but it is definitely a tool that I can use in this setup for me to just attach my laptop so you can get my laptop view and you can see what's going on that way that quickly and that easily without having to worry about, okay, fresh rate, frame rates, what's the size, is it the right thing? Oh, excellent. I have multiple devices coming in without having to worry about resolution. So, Robert with Space Age, thanks for watching. Um, if you'd like, subscribe, let's get those numbers up. You know, it's important to some people. Um, and look, here's hoping that you see me soon. And more of the A10 Mini. And more of the A10 Mini software. Well, I found out where to do the adjustment I was looking for. You have to run ATEM Setup, not under ATEM Software Control, but under ATEM Setup, when you connect to the device. Now, I've already done this update, so I don't know why it's telling me to do it. I'm just gonna continue. Um, and, then under configure, which is what I thought it would be, there's a program preview, and that's what I want. I haven't saved it yet, so let's go ahead and save it. All right, save. And now, oh, thank goodness, now I have my preview. Oh, it makes a difference to me, okay, people? Now I feel a lot more secure now that I've got that set up and I can preview before I cut. And now that I feel more comfortable, fade to black.